is now time for the Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, all you wonderful money masters and treasure hunters out there. Welcome. I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge. And thanks so much for joining me. I absolutely, we're off to a marvelous, it is marvelous Monday. March Madness, marvelous Monday, no, no less. Even though it's April 2nd, you know, hopefully you had a, a great March and a great uh, weekend. I know I did. And uh, folks, hopefully you're off to a great start of your day. You know, there's nothing like being able to start from a place of strength. That's why I go to this place right here over my left hand shoulder. And you should go from a place, you should, you should be able to take yourself to a place of strength each and every day when you've got to make decisions. And so, you know, on my weekend, folks, you know, right now the futures are relatively flat. And what I mean by that is you've got the Dow futures off about 20 points. Uh, you've got the ES Mini down a point and a quarter. It's been floating around for most of the morning in this little sideways trading range. The NASDAQ's off a couple of points. Russell off three. Uh, around the world, you've got the uh, FTSE up five. The uh, DAX is off three. You know, relatively flat. You could go water skiing if you were a water skier. The Nikkei was up 26 points. The uh, Shanghai was up uh, 10 points. The Hang Seng off 33. Our call number is always 877-927-6648. Now, for me, it was just a wonderful weekend. I had the uh, opportunity, the privilege of being able to spend time with both of my uh, daughters up at uh, college. One goes to uh, Florida State. That's where I spent most of my time. The other goes to University of Florida. So you can see we kind of have uh, a, a separation in the in the house. Well, with regard to uh, football games, basketball games, baseball games, and uh, you name it. And uh, speaking of baseball, I did go to watch the uh, FSU uh, uh, guys play on uh, Saturday night. Great game. They are off to a great start of their season. I think they've only had uh, about four, le four losses. But, folks, two of those losses were to the University of Florida. So, uh, you know, just really a fabulous weekend and I, I, just an opportunity to really just kind of reflect, you know, watch your kids grow. There's nothing like it. And, you know, my kids were very, very athletic. Uh, and, and it was always great to not just watch them play athletics, but to help them and get inside their mind. Just like, you know, each of you do. And yeah, last week I was talking about, you know, trying to use an analogy to, of, of a car. If you can remember back to when you first drove the car and when you first got in there, you know, you had your driver's license. Maybe it was you didn't have your driver's license and you realized that maybe there was a little bit more to it, you know, versus today where it's just absolutely routine. It's routine. You hop in your car. You don't really think much of it. You set your mirrors and off you go. But that's not how it was that first time. And so the analogy, Stephen Covey, uh, he's written a, a number of good books. I'd recommend that you pick any of them up. And what he talks about, and I also like to, you know, I was thinking about how to, how to create an analogy for what it was that I was really talking about last week with your mirrors on your car, your side mirrors being your indicators, your, your rear view mirror being nothing more than the left hand of the side of the chart. And, and we want you to watch this uh, on Tiger TV, folks, if you're not listening to us on the radio. And we do appreciate you doing that. Why on Tiger TV? And why the archive on Tiger TV, which is on Channel 9 of this show? Because we're absolutely going to teach you something. I'm going to actually be able to use that rear view mirror, show you what the charts on the left hand side are doing and what that is suggesting that the markets will do on the right hand side because it's all about patterns. You have patterns. We all have patterns. And that's what I really want to be able to show. And so as I was trying to, as I was driving back from Florida State, so it's a little bit of a uh, drive. And as I was just thinking, you know, okay, what can I talk about this week or how do I maybe pull all this together or pull all this together with some time spent with my, uh, with my kids up at uh, school was really talking about, and then Stephen Covey, it was all about the speed of trust. You know, I've talked about this before and this, there's nothing faster Nothing faster in life than the speed of trust. And you can use this in your trading. In fact, you absolutely must understand this principle if you are going to trade these markets. You want to be able to use this principle if you're going to invest in these markets. And if you're not, you really want to understand this principle because what happens is there is nothing faster and nothing less costly than the speed of trust. And I want you to think about it like this, folks. I want you to think of, and you can use it just to, you know, just pick out two people. I'm going to have you pick out two people in your life. Let's just say you're doing a project or there's somebody that you need to rely upon. Maybe it's a coworker. Maybe it's a, a boss. Maybe it's uh, somebody that works for you. Maybe it's a relationship that you're in. But something right now that you have to be able to rely on in order to get a project done, something done. Maybe, you know, it's a collaboration. Maybe it's a supplier for you. But think about who is the person that you could most trust in your life that you could collaborate or should collaborate on, you know, whether it's a project or what have you. And I want you to think about that person because this is going to be a person that you can absolutely trust. So think about it like this because, you see, there's a psychological cost to trust. 
And there is a financial cost to trust. And I'm going to show you that in the markets as well. But think about it like this with that person, maybe to be able to kind of correlate it, if you will. And that's this. That person that you would trust, that you need to get, that you need to collaborate with, whatever that project is, you can trust them. How fast, even if they do a, even if they make a decision, it's the wrong decision, you trust that they made the right decision, right? So how fast is it that you can jump to in identifying that project and rely upon that person? If it's somebody that you really trust, you don't even give it a second thought. It is in the snap of your fingers. It is like a heartbeat. Now, what I want you to do in contrast is think about somebody that you've got in your life that you absolutely also have to rely upon, whether it's a coworker, relationship, whatever it might be, but you just simply don't have the trust in them for whatever reason it is. Maybe it's a skill set, whatever it might be. Maybe they just simply have let you down, continue to let, the, let you down. And think about a project or something that you have to rely upon with that person. Think about the cost associated with that. Number one, there's absolutely an emotional cost when you don't trust something, when you don't trust someone, right? But there's financial cost because when you don't trust somebody to get a job done for you, you're sitting there having to recheck, 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 right? That's called time. How precious is your time? I know how precious my time was this weekend. Even though I got to spend a lot of great time with my kids, time absolutely went too quick. That's why it's so important to be present in whatever it is that you're doing. But contrast the speed and the cost associated with someone that you do trust versus someone that you don't. Well, how do you correlate all that? Well, when I take a look at the speed of trust inside these markets, I take a look at and I think about what it is when I, you know, I had an opportunity to reflect back on the Master Trader Series course that I did in Denver. And really, the whole correlation there, what I was really teaching people, because you see, the speed of trust can actually be taught. That's the cool thing. Maybe you don't trust these markets. Maybe you don't trust the people, you know, you read about, uh, you know, the MF Global thing. Maybe you just have a lack of trust in the markets. Maybe it's the Fed. Whatever it is, you don't trust them. And so what's that cost of not trusting someone? I'm not talking about just simply blind faith trust. Just simply when you don't trust markets, you just simply don't make decisions or you do make decisions. Your decisions are not to really get in these markets. Well, what I want you to do and what I was doing at my master trader course, what I'm going to do in a couple uh, next week in uh, Tampa on the 13th and 14th, what I'm going to do in Boston on the 27th and 20th, it's really all about teaching teaching because you can teach people to trust the patterns that work out there. You see, the patterns that I teach they work 70% of the time, 60 to 70% of the time. And when you see those patterns work, when you understand those patterns, then you really have the speed of trust. When you see those patterns unfold, then what you'll do in the snap of a finger is you will go ahead and you will go ahead and take that trade because you trust, because you know what the distribution of wins and losses are. That's what part of, you know, learning how to trade 1% is all about. And that's why I really want, you know, I want you to think about the speed of trust. Because what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to get yourself there. And, you know, folks, maybe you were in the markets and you got burned. You know, last Friday, I showed you, just for those long-term traders, just showed you the 50-day and the 200-day EMA. We went back to the Dow. In fact, we can do it here real quickly. We went back to the Dow. Uh, I don't know if it's in there. It's not in there. I'm not going to go back and do that right now. Uh, so we went. It, what we did was we went to the Dow. Maybe I'll queue it up at some point in time. We can do it uh, during the uh, show uh, today. But what what I did was I showed you folks just using the speed of trust of using that indicator when the 50-day crosses through to the downside. How you want to go ahead and you want to exit the market if you are just simply managing nothing more than your 401k, your retirement funds, and your only decisions are to be able to get in or to be able to get out. I gave you. At that stage, the speed of trust with regard to, as we went back, we went back, I think it was about 15 years or so, and we took a look at the market. We also took a look at when the 50-day crosses through it. Now, those are lagging indicators, but those lagging indicators would and still will save you more money, more time, more aggravation. Those would be indicators that you don't, those are indicators that are easy to place on any chart, whether you're looking, you're really watching us here at TFNN. You know, and right now I've got the ES Mini up. There is a candle out there that I've got a lot of trust in. That, that trust is going to give us some great information today. That, that candle came in at 8.30 today. That is the hammer candle. As Tom will tell you, that's my candle. That should be your candle as well. I want to be able to teach you how to use that hammer candle. Came in at 830. The low on that is 14. Let me come back here. The low on that is 1400. 0.25. You get a close below 1400.25, folks. I can guarantee you, guarantee, pretty much guarantee that you will see lower prices in the ES Mini. In fact, what it will do, it'll at least get down and test out the bottom of the swing point, put in 
on Friday at 11 a.m. The low on that swing point was 1395.75. Why? Because I have the speed of trust with certain candle patterns that are formed out there that give you absolute caution signs. There are other patterns that we play that we pay attention to, ABC patterns. But when I was talking about trying to put this together for you, the speed of trust, because, folks, that is something that can be taught. You can learn that. In fact, you can also recover from it. You know, maybe somebody that's in your life, you don't trust them, but they can earn that trust back. It happens each and every day. Maybe you feel like the market had burned you and you're not in the market. And so what I want to be able to do is teach you how to get back into the market, how you can trust what it is that you can rely upon yourself. And I want you to have that speed of trust. And folks, I absolutely love being here with you. I hope you had a fantastic weekend. I can tell you, I definitely did. And I love being here with you. We'll be back in just a few minutes. 877-927-6648. Dow Futures off about 22. ES Mini down a point and a half right now. We'll be right back, folks. X-Story Gold Mines, an NYSE Amex-listed company trading under the symbol XG, is slated to be the newest gold-silver producer in Argentina. X-Story is forecast to produce more than $250 million in bullion annually, beginning in 2013, at a cash cost of less than $200 for each ounce of gold produced. That forecast will make X-Story one of the highest margin operators in South America and a sector leader in the mining industry. X-Story has $50 million in its treasury, having spent over $60 million to date on drilling and engineering. The ultimate size of its Argentina discovery could be determined by year-end, as results from the six drills operating at the site are fully assessed. To find out more about X-Story Gold Mines and their exciting growth potential, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex under the symbol XG. TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of investment newsletters. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume in the major stock indices tell him when to be in the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakout gains. Go to TFNN.com today, click Investment Newsletters, and get Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN.com, author of Mastering Probabilities, a daily investment and trading newsletter, and teacher of The Money Game. Studies show that three out of five people are afraid for their life in trading these markets, and the number one reason given is fear of loss. Look, fear stands for false evidence appearing real, and the money game proves it. Lesson number one, don't risk more than 1% of your trading capital on any trade. Why, you ask? Because 35 trades in a row where you risk 50 cents and make a dollar are all you need to double your trading capital versus the 230 losing trades in a row you would need to bring your balance to a hundred dollars let me teach you more about the money game risk-free for 30 days go to the home page of tfnn.com and click on my name steve rhodes for your 30-day risk-free trial you are born to be a money master and i'll teach you how are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. 
here's what people are saying about Tiger TV. Let's go to John in Tampa. Hey, John, what's going on? I'm Tom. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. You having a good day out there? A wonderful day. I love your Tiger TV. I watch it every day. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Oh, man, I appreciate you out there watching it. How long have you been watching the Tiger TV? I watch it almost a month now, and it's just it's wonderful. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's cool. You see the charts and everything. Thanks so much for the hard work. Tiger TV, a great news service from TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. 877-927-6648. And great lineup for you today, as always, on Monday. Following this show, you've got Tom and I doing the Money Masters show. Then I believe we've got a back-to-back -back session with Basil Chapman, his normal show from 11 to 12. And I believe Basil may be filling in for Larry today from 12 to 1. So that's a great thing. Then David White, the warm-up band for the Tom O'Brien show from 4 to 6. And we talked about that speed of trust. You will see the speed of trust either work or fail tonight, I promise you, when you watch, if you do watch that March Madness game between Kansas and Kentucky. I think tick off, tick off. Uh, it's ticking me off as far as how late they're playing that game. That game does not tip off until about 9.20 or so. Don't they know I get up at 4 or 5 in the morning? Anyways, looks like I'm going to have to take a nap or I'll be a little bit uh, blurry-eyed when you see me tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. So I do have the ES Mini up on my uh, screen here right now. If you're following along with us on Tiger TV, uh, and what you're taking a look at is just simply coming off of the low swing point that was put in at 12 noon on the uh, 29th of March. What you'll see is when we put that hammer candle in, uh, when the ES Mini put that hammer candle in at 8.30 this morning, uh, that was a .382 retracement. One of our Fibonacci retracement numbers, you know, my, my daughter is a, a math uh, student, going to be a math teacher, so we get to speak a little bit about Fibonacci, and she actually taught me a few things that I didn't know, so that was very cool. And uh, but one of those Fibonacci numbers that we take a look at is .382. It's really .618 and 786 that we focus on from a contraction standpoint, and it is 1.272 and 1.618 that we focus on from an expansion standpoint. And what you can see right now, the uh, ES Mini is trading into that hammer candle right about the uh, midpoint. And uh, if that low gets taken out, as I said, at the 1400.25, when I mean taken out, mean a close below that, that will tell you that there are lower prices because in that 8 to 8.30 session when you have a hammer candle, and this here is what I would call a type 1 hammer candle. The actual high on that is 1402.50. The close is 1402.50. That is the best kind of hammer candle that you can get out there. It doesn't matter whether it's a daily chart, it's a weekly chart, whether it's a monthly chart, a 30-minute, a 10-minute chart. They all trade the same way, and they all give you the same type of information. That low should hold. You had the market pushed down there, and the bull stepped in and pushed it up. And, you know, we'll see how the market here is going to trade. Obviously, it would make normal sense uh, when I say normal sense, you would expect a .618 retracement off of that bottom. That 618 retracement up to the highs that were put in at uh, 630 in the evening on April the uh, 1st. That was last night when the market opened and on, on April Fool's Day. And just a normal retracement into the .618 area would take you into that 1395 range. And that would be nothing but a normal retracement. Uh, if we go take a look around the world, let's see what's happening around the world right now. You've got the also you got King Dollar trading up 10 ticks. We'll take a look at the currency market. But what you're seeing here, and as we take a look at the DAX, and we take a look at the DAX, and we're traded down to on Thursday last week, February March 29th. Okay, I thought I was looking at February 29th, March 29th. Uh, so as it moved down last week on Thursday, it got down to a low of 68.41. Now 68.41, as you can see, was the .618 retracement, a normal retracement off the low uh, swing point that was put in on March the 7th. So you had a .618 retracement. It retooled a bit, tried to move higher, a little bit higher on Friday uh, this morning, and this morning's action got up to a high of 7,024. You're trading now at 69.47, really a uh, you know right in the middle of its uh, trading session. So no information being given to us there. The uh, If we take a look at what the, uh, let me go ahead and remove just the uh, Fibonacci numbers off there. Let's take a look at the ABC down pattern that it also completed. So we take a look at the, it made a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD pattern as it was also completing that 0.618 retracement. 
made sense that its work was done. When it bounced up this morning, let's take a look at the uh, bounce there. We're just going to come off of the swing point that was put in at the high on the 27th, that high of 71.5368, all the way down to the low that was put in on Thursday. And what you will see is you'll see that what it did was a .618 retracement of that leg this morning. The actual 618, folks, would have come in at 7,034. Where it actually got up to this morning was 7,024. Let me make sure you up. 7,024 versus 7,034. Not too bad on something selling at 7,000, if you will. Let's go take a look at uh, King Dollar, see what King Dollar is doing this morning. King Dollar came down and tested again that February 29th there. We have had uh, several tests. Today was the third test of that February 29th swing point. The high on that is 78.93. If we take a look at what it actually got down to this morning, it got down to 78.92. If you take a look at what it did on Friday, it got down to a low of 78.87. If you go back uh, about five trading sessions ago to March 27th, it gets down to 78.93. That is a strong, bullish, engulfing candle. When we come back, we'll take a look and see where would this pattern go to should the U.S. dollar index fail. Of course, that would take the queen. The queen would have to set sail as well. 877-927-6648. We get back, we'll go see how these markets are going to drop and see if they're going to pop. We'll be right back. In the world of financial markets, there's a new player in town with an exciting new way to trade the markets. Nadex now offers binary options as well as bull spreads in a wide range of indices along with commodity and forex markets. With as little as $100, you can gain access to a new way to trade global financial markets while guaranteeing that your risk will always be capped. Nadex allows you to multiply your trading opportunities in ways never imagined before and access markets you once thought were out of reach. With short-term trading opportunities available, including binary options expiring each hour the market is open, Nadex allows you to take advantage of a variety of market conditions regardless of volatility or market direction. Now is the time to take advantage of this exciting new market. Don't let this trading opportunity pass you by. Open your account today by clicking on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Nadex, a better way to trade. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air, and you've always thought about trying out his newsletter, Market Insights. Well, now is the perfect time. For a limited time only, when you sign up for a two-week free trial to Market Insights, we'll send you a free copy of Tom O'Brien's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. If you decide to cancel within the two-week trial period, pay absolutely nothing and keep Tom's book as a free gift from us. Tom sends out his daily newsletter each morning by 9.30 a.m. with trade recommendations including price targets and price stops. As recently as March 21st, Market Insights subscribers closed out a position for more than a 25% profit in just over two weeks. To get your two-week free trial to Market Insights, along with your free copy of The Art of Timing the Trade, your ultimate trading mastery system, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Supplies are limited for this one-of-a-kind special, so act today and don't let this opportunity pass you by. Offer only valid for new subscribers. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? 
No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney believes that a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation location and the Morgan Stanley Smith Barney financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and certified financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney, LLC, member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. to the races. You got the uh, Dow down 42 points, trading down to 13,170. S&P's off uh, two. You got the composite off eight, small caps off two. Let's see, lead the charge on the way down. You've got the uh, Dow. We're going to take a look at the Dow here in a minute. Uh, you've got Apple trading up out at 602.49 or so, up uh, three bucks right now. So to the upside, let's see what, what is moving and what is grooving. On the moving side, you've got Avon Products. I know they had a, a tender offer, it looks like, by Cody Inc. They submitted an acquisition offer this morning. You've got Avon Products. Uh, your bell is ringing. And you've got, uh, uh, you've got Avon Products trading up at 377, trading out at 2313-ish. That's up by 19%. We'll take a look at that. Again, Apple up $3.28, up a half a percent right now. It's Express Scripts, E-S-R-X, they're up uh, 2 bucks. That's trading up 4% right now. Shire PLC, uh, Shire PLC trading up a buck and a quarter. That's up a percent. You got Coles Corp, K-S-S, they're trading up a buck as well. Abercrombie and Finch, uh, that makes the, maybe the top five or six on the uh, on the top side. Also, I do see Molly Corp, MCP, uh, they are trading up Acme Packet, A-P-K-T. Uh, they are trading up on the grooving side, grooving to the downside. You've got Google, they're off $4.80 right now. Amazon down $4.10. You've got uh, Buffalo Wild Wings just jumped in there. They're down 4 bucks. That's down 4.4%. Uh, uh, Carex Biopharmaceuticals, they're off 65%. Holy cow, they fell out of bed. We'll go take a look and see where why they fell out of bed here. They must have lost uh, some study issue. Let's see. What do we got here on uh, Carrie? Uh, their, fa their phase three trial failed to meet the primary goal. Well, uh, those uh, those pharmaceutical companies, we're going to see if they're trading back into a high volume day. You've got Rangold Resources. They're down three bucks. That's down three and a half percent. You've got uh, Global Payments. Those were the folks I think uh, MasterCard or Visa may have uh, cut ties with them, or certainly they're not very happy with them as far as all of those numbers uh, getting out to the uh, you know, to some of the hackers that are in there. Uh, I believe that was last week. You got Groupon. Uh, they're trading down $2.61. Groupon needs to hire some better accountants, some better CPAs, some better auditors out there. That is no way that uh, they should have come public and had those types of financial uh, material issues uh, that they had. That's just, that's just uh, actually outrageous when you think about it. You've got... Uh, Cinecorp, they're down a couple of points. Continental Resources, CLR, they're off a buck uh, 47 or so. Uh, 877 So let's take a look at the uh, Dow. The reason why we're taking a look at the Dow here is that uh, we were talking about hammer candles on the ES Mini. And when you do take a look at the uh, Dow chart, what you want to take a look at is the candle on Thursday. That session on March 29th. That is also a hammer candle. So if you're looking for an area of support on the uh, Dow, you're looking for a low of 13,032.67. You get a close below that. Uh, folks, and uh, it's not nights out, Irina, Irene, but it is a definite indication of lower prices to come. If you were to come back here and take a look at the uh, Dow chart, you will see the other hammer candles. If you go back to the uh, May of uh, last year, go away in May last year, you'll see another hammer candle that occurred right here. This is uh, this is where my uh, crosshairs 
is that is on the date of uh, September 12th, 2011. That was a hammer candle as well. That's kind of one of those uh, type uh, type one hammer candles because if you take a look at the close, you were at 11,061. 12 and the high was 11,062.03. Almost as good and as important as that hammer candle that's being tested on the ES Mini. Uh, important, you can see you did have a close below that area and then what that led to, that led to the lows that were put in on October 4th. So you want to watch that hammer candle. I'll show you one other hammer candle that was put in on the uh, Dow. That was on the August 3rd time frame. August 3rd, that was a hammer candle. The high on that session was 11904.91. The close was 11896. That's a type 2 uh, hammer candle. It's out there very strong. That thing gave way on the following trading session. You closed all the way down to the 11,372.14. And folks, uh, that, those are the only three hammers out there uh, if you go back into the uh, May time frame. So if those do not hold as support, that is telling you get out of the way. Absolutely get out of the way if you have enjoyed your run-up either from October 4th, maybe it was November 25th, maybe it was uh, December 19th, or maybe it was just simply March 6th. Whenever you had your run-up, folks, what you want to see on this Dow chart is if there's pressure put on that hammer candle, uh, you want to you get out of Dodge, and that is if you get it closed below 13,032.67. Because what that will set up, that will certainly, in my opinion, that what that will set up is at least a test down at the 12,734.80 mark. That is on the hammer candle. If we go take a look at that ES Mini here real quickly, we're going to see that hammer candle so far acting as a support area. In fact, that's kind of beautiful when you're taking a look at it. You had the ES Mini trade all the way down to the 0.786 coming, uh, area coming off of that uh, a low that was put in at 11 o'clock in the morning on March the 30th. So you got a 0.786, you know, area that held as a, a as a support area coming against this uh, candle here at that was put in at uh, 8:30 uh, this morning. And so the area has been tested now during this 30 minute session, which doesn't end for 20 more minutes. We'll come back to it. Certainly, we'll take a look at it before we go off the air. But you would be looking for that area to hold. That area gets tested and it holds, folks. What that says. That says higher prices are coming at you. Uh, again, you do not want to see a close below that on the ES Mini. Of course, that's a 30-minute chart, which is a different frame of reference than the daily chart that we were taking a look at. Now, let's go take a, a quick peek at the uh, currencies, then we'll go take a spin around the world, see what we have out there. And uh, we're going to take a look at that dollar index, because what I do want to show you on the dollar index, because that is going into that bullish golfing, engulfing candle. We are taking a look here at the euro. What the euro has put in here was a Gartley sell pattern. Uh, it completed that Gartley sell pattern here on March the 27th when it got up to the high of 133.844. Now what you're seeing is you're seeing it just continue to test that area. It's just been trading sideways here ever since, really, March the 26th as it uh, moved up higher. And a normal retracement uh, would just simply, well, you've got two retracements that you can take a look at. A normal retracement would be the A to B equals C to D. In this case here, you're coming off of the March 15th low all the way up to the high that was put in on the 27th. Well, 0.382 would be the normal area. The, the, the euro hasn't even gotten down there. Hasn't gotten down there after it made that. That's after four trading sessions. Folks, if it doesn't make it down there tomorrow after the fifth trading session, that tells me, hmm, be suspect of this Gartley sell pattern here. Now, the what you would normally also see, you want to take a look at retracement levels when you take a look at these Gartley patterns, both from the very bottom, this A to B equals C to D, and it didn't completely complete an A to B equals C to D. But uh, you want to take a look, but it did get to that 0.786 area. You want to take a look also at that C to D leg, take a look at that retracement. And what the euro did do on that C to D leg, it did get down beyond the 0.382, almost down to the 0.618 uh, area. That area has held, uh, that looks like that price point is 1.328, uh, 8.93. You're trading right now, 1.32913. Now let's go take a look at the, if this area here holds, in fact, if, if this pattern here fails on the uh, euro, what this would actually set up, uh, this will set up a expansion. This will set up a 1.272 expansion. You would see the euro travel into the uh, price zone of about uh, 1.36 and change. 1.36, let's say 150, 160-ish. And, and that's if 
you in fact uh, do not, uh, if, you, if you break to the upside here. And to break to the upside, what it's got to do, it's really got to, in my book, it's got to get past where the A to B equals CD would complete on this, the euro pattern. That would be one, it's got to get a close above 1.34, 131. You'd want to see it do that with some type of wide ranging bar or at least, you know, a, a, a finish up towards the high of its session. That is on the euro. If we go back, take a quick look at the uh, dollar index here, the dollar index, because it has been, you know, testing, testing, testing that swing point from February 29th. Now, a Gartley pattern, when you take a look at a full extension of a Gartley pattern, what a Gartley pattern is doing, you see you've got this A to B equals C to D. Well, what a Gartley pattern will do in this case here, it's a Gartley sell on the U.S. dollar index. The full extension, the most beautiful extension of a, of a Gartley uh, pattern, a Gartley sell or a Gartley buy. In this case here, it's a Gartley sell. It would be setting up your next A to B equals C to D, your A point, which in the Gartley case would be was your X. That was uh, uh, that was the January 13th high of uh, 8204. That would be your A point. Your B point would be that uh, bullish engulfing candle that keeps testing from the 29th. You'd be looking at the low of that session, 7812. Then you'd come all the way up to the high that was put on March 15th. And a one-to-one -one A to B equals C to D on that Gartley pattern would take you into the 7723 area. Why am I telling you that? Because you want to pay attention to how the U.S. dollar index and how this candle holds. The actual real support on that bullish engulfing candle is truly at 7812. Uh, again, it shows you just how strong the U.S. dollar is by holding that area because it keeps testing that 7893. It's like it's chiseling away and it hasn't really been able to bounce off of it much. If we take a look at the simplest uh, retracement, that would be coming off of the high on March the 15th. Again, that price was 86.16. Uh, down to the, uh, first of all, I just go down to the low that was made on March 27th when it tried to bounce. Couldn't get up to the 0.382 area. If we go and take a look at the Friday session, you know, 0.382 bounce. Dead cat bounce would take you to 79.74. All it says to me is you've got to be suspect of this move here, even though it just keeps hanging around these lows. Looks to me like maybe what King Dollar wants to do is really go down and test that support area. That would be the low of that hammer candle. That would be the low, which would be 78.12. You break through there and you will head to 77.23. You will do that full extension of that A to B equals C to D. And one of the reasons why I'm very suspect here right now, if you take a look at how price is traveling along this C to D leg here to the downside, you will see that you are on the inside path. What that means, folks, is that means that you are dealing with a stronger move on the C to D leg than we had on that A to B leg. So, you know, that's on the U.S. dollar index. Now let's just simply go switch over and let's go take a look at what is uh, moving and grooving. Let's go take a look at the uh, one that has the biggest hit out there. That's down 65%. That is K-E-R-X is the ticker symbol. And let's go see if that is a traveling down into an area of high volume out there. I'm going to go ahead and blow this up on the screen. You can see you're trading right down here at a buck 75. That's after closing on Friday at $5 and $4.98. You talk about a haircut. They just had their, they, they got a buzz cut there. That is a uh, major haircut. Let's go take a look at where you last had volume. I'm going to go ahead and put this on the uh, weekly time frame. Might be a little bit easier for you to follow along on Tiger TV. Make it easier for me to take a look at it. And so when we take a look at volume. This thing did have some volume. Must have been on some type of rumor on March 9th, the week of March 9th, 2012. Thing gapped up with uh, 51 million shares. Maybe they thought that that, uh, uh, that, that, uh, uh, phase C was actually going to work out. But how could that be? That was only four weeks ago. If you take a look at uh, this thing does have some volume up at the high. Uh, it was actually tested during the past couple of weeks here. Now the volume on that candle up at the high on May 7, 2010 had 48 million shares. Uh, you came into that uh, last week with a total of 23 million shares. The week before on 13 million shares. Not enough juice to get up over it. You're clearly trading below that right now. And where you're trading into is really the last, uh, is, is, let's see here, where is this thing? This thing has broken out several times. Uh, it's below the session from March of 2010. Uh, that was the 242 range to three bucks. It's coming all the way back to really the original. Oh, okay, that's interesting. So now take a look at this as you go back. So take, Take a look at the supply line that was out there that was created on March the 7th, uh, folks. That's why you really want to, if you are trading these pharmaceuticals, uh, or you're trading anything, you want to understand the 1% rule. You really want to understand 
uh, how to risk 1%, what that means. It doesn't mean that's how much you're fully invested in a stock. In fact, go over to the homepage of TFNN.com. In the carousel, you can use my position size calculator. That will save you more money than anything, anything else other than the speed of trust. And I want to be able to teach you that speed of trust, and I'll do that for all those uh, lucky folks that are going to attend the uh, money, uh, the uh, mastery traders uh, course that I'm doing. And, and I'm so sure that I can absolutely teach you the speed of trust that if I don't teach you, you don't have to pay a thing. I take all the risk. You get all the benefit. Well, if you take a look at all the risk here on this pharmaceutical, you go back to March 7, 2008. That thing closed out that week at $5.26, and ba-boom, you woke up the next morning. Well, let's say it's Monday morning or certainly during that week of March 14, 2008, traded down all the way to the $0.54 cent area. You know, you talk about a, a psycho stock out here, $5.26, and then the next week, closes out at 50, at 63 cents. That's a whopper. That one is a whopper. Now, the volume that you had down there was 74 million shares. You can see that 74 million shares. You came up into that supply line here on March the 7th with 48 million shares. And there's no wonder that that thing traded down and sideways. Now you're back down. That thing really wants to get all the way back here. You know, stay out of Dodge on this one. Why? Because this pharmaceutical company, if you want to pick this up, pick it up in that 52 cent uh, range because this thing wants to uh, trade uh, down there. Uh, if you're taking, because what you've done certainly is you, you most certainly have broken a B point with volume. That A to B equals C to D. Let's just take a look at the at the smallest A to B equals C D out there. You are uh, below that dollar two one point two seven two. To me, that looks more like a one point six one eight A to B equals C to D. Where does that take you to, folks? Minus fifteen cents out of business. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. We'll be right back. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective and maximize your returns. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Put the power of the Chapman Wave methodology to work for you. No matter what market you trade, what time frame you trade in, or your trading style, the opening call, Basil Chapman's daily market newsletter, is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader. I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. He gives you opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and 
very, very strongly support the use of his opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology, and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit TFNN.com today. Hi, folks. Turns out my best student became my best teacher. Steve Rhodes absolutely raised my standards, and I'll guarantee he'll raise yours. Thanks, Tom. What I've learned is that if you want more, you must become more, and that transformation, folks, that occurs the moment you decide to become a master. Now, the quickest way to mastery is through immersion, and for two solid days in Denver, Boston, and Tampa, I'll create a new standard of wealth for those few trader investors who have a burning desire to succeed. At my Master Trader course, I'll teach you how to create the ultimate money machine. These are the best-kept secrets in the business. Roadblocks, folks. Dabblers give up when they first appear. Stressors last just a little bit longer, but masters expect roadblocks and achieve extraordinary results when they bust right through them. I have all the benefit of knowing the type of wealth creation that I can generate for you. You don't. That's why I'm making this unconditional money-back guarantee. If for any reason you're not satisfied with my Master Trader course, I'll refund every penny. That's right. I take all the risk, and you get all the benefit. Go to the homepage at TFN.com and sign up today. Catch Tom O'Brien and Steve Rhodes as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. The Money Masters, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. 877-927-6648. Dow is uh, off 33 points right now. S&P trying to get back to flat off uh, just less than a point. Uh, you've got the uh, composite off uh, 7 bucks. Uh, small caps uh, leading the charge on the way down, down to 2.2 points. Uh, you've got uh, Apple up $7.50 right now. Amazon is trading down 2.7% uh, uh, off $5.43 right now. And I've got their chart up on the screen. And we've been talking about hammers all morning. I want to be able to help you, you know, through the speed of trust. I want to help you be able to hammer out your financial uh, future. If we're taking a look at this uh, Amazon chart out here, and we take a look at the A, B, C, D down that was established that was started back here on October 14th, 2011. The A point on that, folks, was 246.71. The B point was put in on October the 26th. That was at a low of 196.51. It retraces up to a high uh, where you just simply were, you know, you've got a gap down during that uh, A to B leg. Uh, moves up. Let's take a look at what that retracement level was on the way up here. Uh, you went from your A to your B. You got to, you didn't even get up to that 0.618 area. Uh, it continues on with its C point, uh, which was established on the uh, 14th of November, 11, 14, 11. Uh, you were taking a look at a high of 222.35, a one to one, a to B equals C to D, takes you to 172.10. It finally gets down there this day right here, December the 14th. So it makes, it completes a D point. And it does that on December the 14th, gives you that full price prediction. And look at that candle out there, folks. There is your Type 2 hammer candle that was created. You had a low of 170.25, a high of 180.75, closed out at 180.21. That hammer candle was test that volume there on that hammer candle was 11.6 million shares. You got a test of that on 8.2 million shares, closed back above it. That was on December the 29th. Uh, closed out at 173.86. Uh, you can see how this hammer candle is held. It's been tested a few times. It was tested again January 13th. It was tested on a gap down with volume, 21 million shares, on February the 1st. I will tell you that there is some strong support down at 170.25. That is on Amazon. In fact, I would be a buyer of Amazon if it got down and tested the February 1st swing point. You had 21 million shares. You're talking about a low of 172 up to a high of 179. Uh, you know, what you'd love to actually be able to see it do is get back and test the low of that hammer on December the 14th. Let it get down. Test that on lighter volume. And then what you've got is you have a nice, uh, very nice uh, trading range that has set up here on Amazon. Now, what you've got to pay attention to, I don't know that it'll get down there and test that hammer once more. Why? Because what you're starting to establish here, you're starting to establish higher lows all the way up, and you are starting to establish some higher highs. So, you know, you're looking at a uh, possibility of probably only pulling back into that candle on uh, February 1st. That is on Amazon, A-M-Z-N, is the uh, ticker symbol there. Let's go take a look at... Uh, 
what else is moving. Let's go take a look at Avon products. Let's go look at AVP. That is the ticker symbol there. Let's see if that is trading up into its highs or if it is past its all-time highs out there. Nope, it's just simply trading into, look at this, you got to love this. You know, that's why we talk about wanting to understand volume characteristics. Because when you take a look at October 27, you had Avon. Apparently, they didn't just ring the doorbell, they crushed the doorbell. That traded down with 32 million shares, 31.5 million shares. At, that was after the October 26 area had 6 million shares. You're trading into that high right now. Uh, that high was uh, was uh, 2360 on that candle, uh, down to a low of 2285. And if you're taking that, you've got volume today for sure. Uh, but I think they're ringing the bell, trying to take their money. At least if I was in Avon right now, I think I'd be ringing the bell, taking my money. And that is uh, that's the end of our show, folks. Stay tuned. Tom O'Brien and I'll be up next. Then we got a double hour, a double header of Basil Chapman. It's been great to be here with you. Nothing travels faster than the speed of trust. Thanks so much for trusting me and being here, folks. Have a great morning.